I'm Jenny. And we are going to teach you today how to do a monkey fist knot. So this can be done with a multitude of different leathers. Jenny and I are gonna walk you through all the different sizes and options that you can do while we make this fun wrap bracelet. So go ahead, if you want to, you can check out links below in the description to check out the links to the different leather that we have, as well as links to some of the other wrap videos in case you want that aspect in more detail. All right, so to get started on our monkey knot leather wrap bracelet, tell us, Jenny, how we're gonna go in and measure out our leather and the sizes you're using and uh, how we're gonna get started. Okay, so the first thing I did, we're using a 1.5, you're probably gonna say this too, but a 1.5 millimeter leather cording. I cut four feet, um, which will be plenty for your bracelet um, to have extra to tie your knots on the end. Um, and then, I find that going seven inches from the end will um, end up, when you're finished, putting the knot about in half. Balancing in the, it out. In the center, yeah. And so this four feet is going to be for approximately a foot long base, basically, that you're having the space that you're going to wrap your leather wrap around. So if you want to do more than that for the cord, you're going to have to think about that measurement. Good to start out with one and then go from there. Mm -hmm. And for reference, this is going to be a one and a, or one millimeter, and then we have some two millimeters. So we're going in between, we're using the one and a half. So how are we gonna get started once we're, so we're seven inches into four feet. Mm -hmm. And let's see what you, let's see what you got. Okay. So uh, the first thing you're gonna do is hold the seven inch piece through your index finger, your middle finger, and your thumb. And then you're gonna put your bead in between those fingers there. So it's like a Pac-Man. And it can be yeah. any six millimeter bead. In the case yeah. of this one here, it was um, a four millimeter ball post. I think one of these, this one have a eight millimeter or they have both have six. They both have six. Nice. So you can yeah. see how the leather will make it look a different mm -hmm. size. Yeah. Um, and then for this one, I think what we, what I found to look the nicest was four wraps. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to start um, wrapping away from yourself over top of the bead, can you see it right yep. there? Four times, mm -hmm. and you wanna make sure that they don't overlap and they're not too tight around your fingers because we're gonna slide it off. And that you don't cut off your circulation and- Every time my fingers are And so cool. you also um, are going to be able to get it off and keep it in that nice form because you can mm -hmm. see with some of these other thicker leathers, those ni that nice lineup. Mm -hmm. All right, now that you have four, and we're doing four complete wraps. Yes. So not three and a half. I know when you taught me how to do it, I made that mistake right away. So you want that complete jump. four. Yeah. Let's it there. And now that you have those four, then it, it looks like when you're saying the complete wraps, it looks like I have five right here, but that's just because that's where they meet. It, you'll be able to see there that it's still just four. Nice. Um, the next thing you're gonna do is take your long tail this is another good re a reason it's good to start with about four feet um, because you don't have to finagle as much. Right. Okay. Um, you're going to go in um, from the front to the back and then back through your fingers there. Can you? Yep. So you're going from the front right behind the pearl that you're using as your six millimeter and then in through that left hand side. So it's creating just a tiny bit of a loop around the back of the cord and around the pearl itself. Perfect. And repeating that same thing then, that mm -hmm. four. So that's it. your first complete wrap, correct? Yes. Okay. And then, and then you do your four there. And you're stacking from the bottom to the top along your back yes. fingers, basically. You're making sure as you're going, you can see that Jenny is finagling her leather and lining it up so that way she is getting that nice wrap where it's sitting one on top of the other. And when your fingers turn purple, you know you're doing it right. <laughs> Perfect. When they're purple, that's your go time. <laughs> and you're going through. And now this happened to me, so just in case people are wondering, if the bead happens to pop out by accident, you just Put shove it back. it back in there. <laughs> yep. Eat that again. It reminds me of Pac-Man. Yeah. I like an alligator. It'll And it'll probably fall off when you're taking it off your fingers or fall out, so just put it back in. Okay. That's, I have three, not four. And once you get that fourth wrap then, we're just doing a 
So you have basically a figure eight, and then you're wrapping around that figure yeah. eight. Yeah. Got it. Then you take it off. Mm -hmm. Did you want me to say these parts? Or yep, no, go for okay. it. I'm just here for clarification and to learn, like everybody else watching. <laughs> and if you guys have other knots, too, that you'd like to see or other workings of leather, make sure to comment below and give a little feedback for us because we love to see and use this mixed metals and mixed materials. Mm -hmm. And we like to utilize our staff and all the great skills they have. Mm -hmm. So, This is where it gets a little tricky where that bead is going to pop out. Mm -hmm. um, just pot, put it back in until you get your wraps. So now we're going from... It in there. Mm -hmm. The top going through this top of the eight to the bottom, and you want it to go closest to this side. To the left. Got it. And then you're going to, are we doing wraps in there as well? Yeah. And same deal, four, mm -hmm. always the four count. Nice. Yeah, if you end up with less or more, well, you don't want more, but if you end up with less, it works. You'll just see it. You'll be able to see it. It might bother you. No, it might bother you that you're like, oh, I see the. I see. Gotcha. Three. Gotcha. You might also should see, have four. Yeah, you might also see the bead too because you're gonna have less there. Perfect. And you can see that Jenny is taking her time, so she makes sure that those cords line up perfectly because it's going to drive you crazy <laughs> in the next step if your cord is not lined up. And you can use different cord for this as well. So if you want to try it out with um, some embroidery floss, might be a little bit hard. The leather's nice because it doesn't fray mm -hmm. and it doesn't pull apart. So as you're tightening, you'll be able to tell and to be able to see that a little bit. Go ahead, Jenny. I tried it with Sutesh and it drove me insane and did not work. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> it can it... be done, but not by Jenny. <laughs> no, no. It would have been pretty if it worked out, but. Uh, but I'm thinking you could do this with uh, hemp. It might be a little bit difficult because of the scratchiness, so you want a nice smooth hemp. You could do it with um, your Chinese knotting cord. Again, it's going to be a little bit slippery and may drive you a little crazy, but it's mm -hmm. in there as well. And once you, I think you would start with something stiff like this and then move on once you got the technique down. Then it I becomes easier. Can, yeah. Nice. Okay, so we've got our four, four wraps. Four, 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 four. Got it. Okay, now this is where people kind of throw it out the window. Don't throw it out the window. Yeah. <laughs> Don't throw it out the window. <laughs> um, so you have this part, and now we're going to tighten your top and the bottom, and then we're going to tighten the sides again, too. Perfect. So uh, I found the easiest way to do uh, to figure out where to start tightening is this cording is the length of the leather. So that original seven inches. Yeah. You're so, pushing up. So that we don't want to start with. That we're going to end with when we tighten it. So the first thing you want to start with is over on the opposite side of that. Does that make sense? Yep. We're gonna. So you're starting yeah. with the top of that eight. And then as you pull up on there the top of that eight, it's starting to tighten there. everything. Pull that one, and then push down the next one so you can see which is the one on the bottom. So you're pulling down basically on the left and pushing up on the right. And as you push up on the right there, the next one pops up in line. You can tell where you need to do this. And then I brought over here too, as it gets smaller and smaller, this is the tulip um, all, and a all or a reamer that's not spiky, um, that doesn't have any of the emery board or anything on it, the file mm -hmm. on it. That's great for getting kind of that last tightening of the knot. Jenny has done a number of these and I challenged her to keep going and making mm -hmm. more. Um, so she, you can see how that cord that she's feeding through and as she tightens, all that length of that seven inch cord is going to come through, or all that cord is going to come through on that seven inch side. So that seven inch length is going to equal up and you're going to have about 16, 17 inches on each side. Yeah, perfect match. <laughs> now, if you happen to do your knot and it's not as tight as you want to, if it's a little bit looser, go back to a starting spot and see, mm -hmm. just go up and down, pulling up with, say you want to like tighten up here, Pull up on there to see which direction it's going. You do, and that I realized the last time I made this was mm -hmm. when it when this cording you can tell is making up 
the and next the starting the the turn that 90 yeah. degree angle and that's where you can pull it and you know going in that direction that you're not going to tighten it the wrong it way loose. yeah gotcha so at that 90 degree turn then you can see again she's pushing up on the left kind of pulling down then and moving those down to tighten that knot and it gets, gets little, tighter and tighter. little trickier and that's where that um that nice version of if you need to you can grab with that reamer also jenny and i did if you want to see this in a little bit more detail working through some of the issues and having my hands in the seat seen as well and working with i think we worked with three millimeter leather also to see a bigger without a bead in the center um, you can check out the facebook live that jenny and i did about two weeks ago on this monkey fist knot as well and then we are going to be utilizing this knot. I have here some beaded beads as Jenny's tightening up. And we have the pair of earrings that was made and then just cut short. And what type of glue did you use on this one again to just um, go a tiny bit? Loctite. Some little bit of Loctite just where we trimmed down. But you can see this I have as a necklace. So just a knot tied over the end that you can slip on some of the beaded beads here from some of the subscription box materials from months past and that's gonna get you that look as well, that it's almost like a bead stopper. So Jenny's tightening hers, which we're gonna use as our knot or as our kind of button closure for our leather wrap that we're gonna be doing. Um, and I just wanted to say, when I got to the end, mm -hmm. what it, it pulled this part tight, and what that's gonna do is then start the opposite side where you need to pull that tight as well. Gotcha, so, so you can see where that fold is and see where you need to pull. And then that's that, a really great tool. It um, saves your fingernails. Yeah. It makes it easier because you can see exactly what cord you're pulling up. Yeah. So you're just doing a push and pull, basically starting from the start, from that seven inches. If you want to, so you know even what cord to work with and pull, you could take a little bit of a piece of tape and put it at the end of that seven inches so you know by any chance which cord you're pulling when you get to this portion that's and this true, yeah. this size and say all right which way am I pulling am I pulling up and I pulling down and Jenny's making her knot really nice and tight which is awesome if your first knot is not as tight mm -hmm. uh, mine here I did the gold one I think I think I did the gold one um, you can see a tiny bit of the bead in there mm -hmm. that's fine too you can kind of move your leather around and, and push it around but the nicer you get that original tightness the nicer that knot is going to look and it looks like I could have done with three wraps instead of four, but it still looks pretty. Yeah. I like the look of the four wraps. I think it's unexpected. It has that nice kind of Chinese knot look to it. It almost looks like a love knot. And cool. You're finishing up on that interior. And the higher quality you're cording, the harder it is to do. <laughs> The Greek leather is harder because it's nice and soft. The stiffer the cord, like an Indian leather, that's going to be a little bit easier to do because you have this more to All right, that's the last, right, the last, part, the last right part. That coming through. <laughs> Perfect. And then afterwards, we're just going to do an overhand knot and tie it together so we have a nice starting spot. You want me to go ahead and do that? Yep, go ahead and do that, guy. So pinch it together and just that overhand knot. Perfect. Pull through. I'm pushing that down. Same deal, I did a Better Beater episode on tying knots. If you need to, you can also use this reamer in the section there to hold it so you can get your knot nice and close. And then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna take over Jenny's leather piece now and show you guys how to start sewing in and doing a leather wrap if you want to. And then Jenny's gonna come back and join us for the end piece. So now that we have our end here and our knot, we have about 12 to 14 inches on both sides of our cord. So it's nice because it evened out. And I have 11 OC beads. I have quarter tilas and tila beads. If you're unfamiliar with the tila beads, they are two hold square shape flat there. And then here is a quarter tila. So it's a quarter of the size, approximately a quarter of the size, and then some 11 O's. I have a size 10 needle on here with some 0 .006 cord. I'm gonna take this cord 
and, or the thread and tie it around the cord. So right after the knot that Jenny made here, I'm tying a nice tight knot. So that way it stays right at the end there. Eventually I'll go back then and burn down this thread. And now what I'm gonna do is start to create my leather wrap. We have a ton of other videos on this, so I'm not gonna take a ton of time, but if you do want to uh, follow along to other videos, we can put some links for those in the description as well. So I'm gonna start with 1110 because I don't wanna stretch my leather too far apart too soon. So I'm gonna kind of build up to the size of the tila and that quarter tila. I'm gonna take my thread, bring it with my needle over top of the cord, almost like a loom project. We're gonna go over that cord underneath and through that 11 OC bead. As I come through that 11 OC bead, you can see the cord or the thread going underneath the cord, wrapping around, which is gonna loop that around the top of the leather. I'm gonna push it down a little bit further. And then I wanna loop around the bottom of the leather as well. So I'm gonna go over the top of the bottom leather, take my needle through, and then once again, out through the top of the cord. So you can see that right there. Thread over the top, needle underneath, through the bead, and out to the top. Give a nice tight pull. Now with my thread, I'm gonna tuck it underneath that leather so it's coming out between those two cords. Increase now from one to two beads. We're gonna create a triangle or a V there right at the end. Those seed beads sit right in the middle there. You're gonna stretch your leather apart. Take your thread over the top of the leather. Take your needle underneath the leather then. Your thread goes through those beads with the needle going from the bottom to the top towards the top of the leather. Slide that down close, but not too close that it's going over the top. You're gonna to go underneath the second cord here, thread goes over, needle goes under, and through and bring to the top side. So basically you're just creating loops with your thread. From here, once again, my thread tucks underneath so it's coming out through the center. Now you guessed it, we're gonna go from two, wrap, or two beads to three beads, because again, we're getting that triangle. Again, thread's coming over the top, it goes underneath, that first leather, the needle goes through the beads and to the top of the lower level. Slide it in because you want your cord nice and tight. And then once again, that thread goes underneath the cord. The needle goes from the back to the front of the top and the cord loops around the leather. See, nice and easy. Now once again, underneath the cord, and what you can see now is those three C beads, they're about the height of my Tila bead. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to stack one, two, and three of my quarter Tila's. Those quarter Tila's are going to lay also in the center. So you're treating the quarter Tila's and the Tila's each hole independently like its own group of seed beads. So I put those three on. I'm now looping my thread around the bottom leather, sewing the needle from the back to the front, and pulling that guy tight. And get that nice stacked look. Again, over top of the leather, thread goes to the back and over. The needle goes from the back to the front of the cord. Now when I go underneath, of my thread, my leather, I'm going to tuck into the second hole. So just like I was getting ready to put on my next round of seed beads, same deal. Instead of putting on the next round of seed beads or the next round of beads, I'm just grabbing onto the second hole of the quarter tailors that are already there. Throw that leather over the top and sew back through. That's my first loop around the leather. Leather goes to the bottom and again, through. So you always should see to know whether or not you need to go back through the bead or not. You should always see with every hole that opposite side has two, 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 two at the top. So it's going every other. And what that's going to do 
is that's going to stabilize it and hold it and make sure that your thread has gone through multiple times. From here, I'm going to take turns kind of changing up the pattern. So I'm going to take this apricot gold 11-0 seed bead, put three more of those on to do a little metal, and again, thread goes over the top, needle goes underneath, sews through the seed beads from the back of the bottom cord to the top of the front cord. If it gets looped around double, go ahead in and just pull that. Sometimes a double loop will happen. It just gets twisted around the leather. Pull one of those loops out and then tighten up. From here then again, you're going over top of the leather. Needle's going from the back of the top leather or whichever leather you're coming out of to the bottom of the next one. Thread goes through and loops up. From here then, I'm going to take turns putting on my tila in the same direction. Three more seed beads, drop three quarter tilas. So you can play around with the design of this and with the pattern, which is what I'm going to do before we invite Jenny back in to tie the end of our cord. So just to show my bracelet, Adam, as I'm working on it and give you some pointers, do not pull too hard because then you get your thread really tight around your leather and you start having it go one side to the other. You want to make sure to try to keep it equal. Also keep in mind that you can play around with the quarter tilas, whether or not you want to do three or four high, it's up to you. You can see four high is actually a little bit bigger than a regular tila for the quarter tila, but you can put two on, uh, one on the inside of two seed beads. And I'm really just going through and creating this random pattern, picking up the random collection. The next I'm gonna do um, a couple passes of gold, maybe then a little white or maybe another tila in. So you can really have fun changing up this pattern. I'm gonna continue till I have about six and a half inches of beads because that's about my wrist. So my wrist I, is about six inches. I like that extra quarter and, or um, uh, three fourths of an inch to put on my bracelet and have a nice fit. So I'm gonna keep sewing in. I just wanted to show you that little pattern that's going on and then continue on with all of my seed beads. So at the end of your bracelet here, you're going to go through and tie off the thread ends together. So I am going to once again make a knot. So Jenny made a knot after that monkey fist. I'm gonna make a knot here. When I make my knots with my leather, I try to make sure that the cord is not crossing over itself too much. So just like Jenny did with the monkey knot, and you can see I'm taking my time making this knot. You wanna make it look the nicest. So if I see the leather crossing over itself, I wanna make sure to undo that. I'm gonna get that nice and tight next to my last seed bead. Now you can see what I did to downgrade that was I went from my tilas all the way around here back to that same starting pattern of three, two, one when it came to seed beads. We're gonna go through then and just like I did the other side, tie this end around here. Then once you burn it down, you're not gonna have to worry about it. I'm gonna do a sewer's knot where I take my thread in through the knot and through the loop once, and now I'm gonna take it through yet again to make sure that that knot really stays closed. Give a nice tight yank and then repeat. This is also going to hold the leather together as well, so it has two points and purposes. You can see there I made my loop, now I'm going and tucking my cord back through that loop and pulling it out. Nice tight pull. If you want to, you can even get in there with the pliers, give a nice tight pull there like I just did, and then take your thread end and burn that down. I also went through already and burned down the starter edge right to the end there, so you can see it in here. And then we'll bring Jenny on back to show us how we're going to do our knot for our closure to make our loop for our monkey fist to sit inside. So Jenny's back in and welcoming her back into the uh, studio. She's gonna show us a couple of different options for our knots on the end. So Jenny, what can we do to finish this off? Um, there are a couple of ways that are nice for finishing it. Um, one is taking the end and keep these pretty tight together. You can go back to this side and tie a knot. Um, 
And just tie that overhand knot basically yeah. right underneath the one that I already have. Yeah, and that would look very nice. Yep. Um, but you're going to have a little more bulk at the base there. So if you want to do this method, possibly don't tie that knot off first. Wait until after you're doing that loop. So rather than oh, tie, that, tie that mm -hmm. regular loop. And then what we discussed kind of, all right, what's the most practical way to tie this off? That would be to go um, measure your knot to your cording. And you want that to be tight. Uh, that's pretty good. It's funny, after you do so many, you just know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you just know. Yeah. Knot. And Jenny held it perfectly, exactly mm -hmm. in the right direction. And just that overhand knot again. Oops. Um, and then another thing you can do if you do have extra, I'll tighten that first. And then before you pull real tight, just make sure you've done so many. But just make sure that your loop is still going to fit in yeah. there, basically. Very cool. And you don't want it to be too tight because then you will never be able to put it on yourself. <laughs> yeah. Then you'll always have to have a friend. Uh -huh. All right, and then tighten up that knot. And then what are we doing with our ends? A couple of things you could do, if you wanted to make um, this bracelet like as a gift, you could do another one. And um, then they can tie it off if they yeah. want to. That's a great idea. And then it could be adjustable also, but then you're going to have a lot of extra. Um, one of the things I usually would do is put um, a larger hole bead right on, on the end there. Um, a 6 be cute. bead. Oh yeah, that'd be really Eight cute. 8 might even fit on there, yeah. Um, or the other thing you could do is just leave a little tail and trim it. That's what I was going to um, do with that one. Yeah. And some people, uh, you, when we used to teach classes, would put a little knot. At the end of each. I like that look it. for, not only for the practical reason of keeping that knot together, but also just kind of that boho look of mm -hmm. a little bit left over at the end, which you're really not going to see much because it's going to fold back over itself and that knot is going to sit yep. inside. So we're just going to go ahead and take one end like this and I'll just do a little fold. And then you have scissors next to you. Will you grab those please, Jenny? So I'm going to do a knot there. Nice tight pull at that point. Knot here. Again, this is kind of that most simplistic, you don't need anything else, just gathering up your materials, and then tie me off. I like to make my knots also not the exact yeah, same, same length, way. so one's mm -hmm. a little bit shorter than the other. And then you're just going to cut off a little bit further down, and I don't particularly glue, but if you want to, you can always glue those knots closed a little bit to hold them off. And then once you're finished here, you can see how it's going to lay on your wrist. You flip it over and you can open up that loop and tuck that knot in. And because it's such a big knot and has that fun look, you're not going to have any issues with it coming off as you're working for it. Thanks everybody so much for joining us and for Jenny for sitting in the studio and showing off your talents. Remember if you haven't yet already, go ahead and comment below. Let us know if you like those leather videos. Encourage Jenny to get back into the studio and record as well as say any other knots that you're interested in or things that you want to learn or things that you've learned in your trial of doing this option. Remember if you do want to check out any of the materials, check out any of those other wrap videos, we're going to put the link in the description right below the video. Video. The other thing, Jenny, what do they need to do? Like us on the internet. There you go, like us. So you can also <laughs> like this as well as subscribe so you don't miss anything from us here at Potomac Beads. If you do happen to make your own monkey knot bracelet, you can go ahead and post pictures of it in our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making. Thanks so much again, Jenny, and everybody enjoy playing around with the leather and making your own monkey fist knots.